Let us join in the recitation of the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Jeffers here. Jones here. Seiski here. Sis here. Troiki here. Mashari here. The agenda has been set to you, and it is also in front of you for February 27th, 2023. I have an item to add to the agenda with the January Bank Reconciliation. Mm -hmm. I have a motion to accept the agenda with the addition of the Bank Reconciliation. So moved. Second. Roll call, please. Jeffers? Aye. Jones? Aye. Mashari? Aye. Sixteen? Aye. Sis? Aye. Troiki? Aye. Motion passed. Okay, so the approval of the minutes from the February 13th meeting. We'll all get you that to you. In addition to correction provisions, I make a motion to approve the minutes from February 13th. Second. All please. Jeffers? Aye. Jones? Aye. Mashari? Aye. Saiski? Aye. Sis? Aye. Troiki? Aye. Motion passed. Also, a few more minutes, but also the other the special meeting on February 21st, 2023. Questions, questions, questions. I make the motion to approve the minutes from February 21st. Second. Roll call, please. Jeffers? Aye. Jones? Aye. Mashari? Aye. Saiski? Aye. Sis? Abstain? Troiki? Aye. Motion passed. As I look and peruse the audience here, I see we have no visitors at this point in time. I'm sure there's quite a few people that are tuning in through cyberspace. So we go on to my report. Uh, as I stated before, no big grant is coming across. We will need legislation to accept it. At this point in time, there is $4,262 available. And the things before we go around and, uh, and make our wish list and everything else is that. Uh, we have to be prudent of where we're going to use money. I see in the future, due to no better to this commission to end the aggregation that they are, they went to the standard service supplier. These people were not contributing at that point in time to no better. So maybe in the future, maybe next year, the grant will not be as big because we did not have the electronic electric aggregation in place. We are looking to put that in place now. Hopefully in the mid-year here, around June or so, May or June. So that will be 
Any questions on that? Can I have the information tomorrow and I'll get the conversation? Let's move on to the law director. No report, Mr. Mayor. Thank you. This clause. The payment listing from for February 8th to 23rd, as well as the financial reports from February 1 email. Does anyone have any questions? Okay. 2022 year end update. We're closed. It happened on Saturday. The I mean, minutes came on Saturday morning and posted Saturday. So um, everything's been reported. There'll be a public notice published in the news in the Crown Globe for the financial reports being accessible to anybody that wants to make a button to do that. Um, the one thing I'm going to talk about a little bit is the fact that we rely on the um, Harris to prepare our notes. And when we originally sent it back on the 16th of January, it was the understanding that they would have a quick turnaround. So uh, the UAN software, which is the software that we use, closes out on the 28th and it locks you out. It won't let you do any transaction past the 28th. And what is concerning is payroll is the first. So payroll was sitting there waiting to go hoping that it was going to be done. So I'm going to be addressing something with the ordinance committee about making a tweak for that particular pay period. Um, and also we're renewing the contract for the note preparation. So I've been with the law director for some guidance on some verbiage I can put in there to say that, you know, maybe a turnaround date of within 25 to 30 days, no later than two weeks before the end of the Close out period. That way I have a little bit of time more than a Saturday to look at the paper here. That's that. And luckily I got the January bank reconciliation done today, so that'll be available in the book for signatures. So if you have any questions. Um, is December the book down? It's been up, yeah, okay. it's, it's there too. Okay. Thank you for that, Ms. Moore. Sure. Did you want to do the record score? Um, January building was sent to you, and it's also on thing right there, just the three. Thank you to the rest of the record score. Mm -hmm. Thank you for the report. Moving on to the department's service. That was also emailed to you in the packet. And then the zoning is down there, just the two, the shed and the full Any comments about the service? Moving on to fire. Miss Walls, I move the labels, the crucial age, eight, eight, and one other. That's part of December and January, that was 10 PMS. Motor vehicle, five crucial aids, and two others. And the train consisted of PMS and mandatory driver. Any comments about the report from the fire? Um, seeing the fire chief is not here, the reason why NIMS is on there is because he wanted everyone, just as a reminder, to know that council, mayor, staff is supposed to take the NIMS training um, in the fire classes because it helps with grants. Ms. Um, I 
I'll ask the question under fire, but Mayor, can you address the timeliness of the reports? Because this is already going to be marked pretty soon, and we're just finding out about January. And what is the disposition on the fire chief's um, certification for firefighter number two? That was one of the requirements when he was hired. From the discussion that I've, I've had with the chief, you know, it would be beneficial, he feels, and we feel that you know, he would be a firefighter too. But he has spent his thinking is too that with the funds that it is going to so cost to do that, would it be more worthwhile to maybe risk, take those funds and use it for training for some of the younger people who will be moving up? That's his thing. I think we should put that on the agenda for the workshop. Wasn't that part of, I'm not opposed to talking about it at the workshop, but I, I think that that was part of the stipulations and in, in terms of also just bringing him in on as the the fire chief from interim into that. And I think that that was talked about ad nauseum and that was part of the requirements. Mm -hmm. Additionally, if you look at the certification of these other firefighters, they're very well qualified. Some of them have three and four certifications. Um, And not to beat a dead horse, um, after Jeannie just spoke on just not getting the uh, reports, uh, you know, kind of late going into March, but I, I just don't understand why we can't get reports every month. I understand he's probably super busy. I get that. I do. Um, but I don't know. I feel like everybody else, when they're asked to do something, they get it. So I would just say maybe if there's something maybe you can do on your end, uh, you know, just let them know that we would appreciate those reports every month, or we could tell them if you would like to show up to a council meeting. I think we all see that's a valid reason. Um, it's just asking maybe the safety chair to ask the police chief and the fire chief to have their reports at the first meeting of the month. It just has been for a while that they've always given that the second. So maybe just. Okay. Yeah. Anything else is for us, I have a question. Please. And if this goes somewhere else, then we can go somewhere else. And if I'm forgetting an update, remind me. Do we have, like, what's the status on the holding tank? Is that the. Is the board just go for it? I mean, this goes to Rochester. Uh, we've given notice to the engineer to proceed on the. the a parking lot in the tank, so we're just waiting for him to tell us our next steps. Okay. And are we concerned about the EPA? I know we've sort of talked about this a little bit. Are we concerned with EPA and the washing of the trucks? And I, again, I know that we've talked about that a couple of different times where they're going to wash it and what they're supposed to do. Um, but if they can't wash it there, and I know we have a mild winter, thank goodness. But are we concerned with any of that? Anybody's knowledge? Again, as far as, far as the cleanliness of the trucks, I they supposedly worked out something with one, one of the, a couple of the other flood departments if need be. I think they'd be able to clean them there. Uh, I'm sure that they haven't cleaned them here. But uh, as the uh, fiscal officer said, you know, we're just going through procedure to move on with the tank. Okay, thank you. Moving on now to the police. We have 55 citations. And nine calls for service. And Ms. Water was also emailed to you. Which, uh, the narrative that, uh, the, that the person that is charged with OBI, I thought was 
quite descriptive what the person is doing. Anything else as far as points? And then we want to move on to our boards. We move on to the center check. Okay, so we uh we all met uh, last week, I think. Last one. Yeah, last week. Um, discussed obviously with the cemetery uh, board here as well. Uh, they are under the understanding. They understand what we have asked as council on the requirements for. Uh, Pretty much the ask of just the uh, the roadway or pathway and um, they're taking it um, day by day and they're going to get us some answers as soon as possible so, that is all i have if i could add something to that uh just sort of being rather being very cooperative uh i was asked by one of our council members to find where the pin is the carpets pin to the north in section l which i did find there was any pink flag there by the pen, and it's also painted. Uh, I also took the liberty to go over and find the pin that I knew was there. Of course, it took a little effort to find it. Of where the backyard ends for the property that is adjacent to the parsonage. There is a flag there also. I measured from that pin to the edge of where the gravel is, where the turnaround is, and right there it's 23 feet. So if they run that straight, you know, it will be quite a distance from the in lines of this, uh, the southern in lines of the properties that adjoin the village property. Uh, one of the things, too, if you just do line of sight, uh, some people have used the village property to store some of their uh, items, I want to say, or put some things that they maybe have no really use for in, in that property. So, uh, you know, if and when this could come to fruition, it would have to be moved. Anything else as far as the cemetery? Just one question here. When you measure, did you measure from the, the 23 feet over to where the pin was at the cemetery for the lots? No. Like no. adding nine mm -hmm. foot to it that? It would be substantially more. Okay. I'd say to the edge of the turnaround. Or from the pen to the edge of the turnaround is 22 feet. What's the distance of the turnaround? Uh, the thing that, as I was there measuring, when these things happened, somebody came up there to visit one of their graves and decided to use the turnaround and promptly ran over the first flag that I put on there on the edge of the pen. It's in the same chair. So we can see that there is an issue there of trying to make that turn that you know, the survey would help. We need to park, please. Oh, we don't have anything. <coughs> um, so I wasn't able to make the meeting that they had on Thursday, which was moved because of President's Day, but um, a little bit of a recap. So they um, are diligently working on a work list for the operator to maintain operations and on task. Um, they set a meeting date for RCAP, which um, was sent out from the water clerk, some different options, um, but they settled on the date of March 7th at 6 p.m. And Bram Hall, um, Aaron from Bram Hall, is going to do his best to also be in attendance. Um, so I would assume we probably need to make that a public notice, right, Corey? Okay. Um, so if they didn't notify you already, just so you know. Um, they talked to the company um, about the VAC trailer, and they're working on getting an ascent, an accent, an account set up uh, with the company and dates for the training and running it are still looking to be the mid to the to end of March. So they'll still um, need the service worker, but they'll of the company. I don't know. The name of the rental company for the van truck. Yeah. JDC. 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 Um, so they'll still be looking for the service worker's assistance on that and incorporating him into the training. Um, obviously, once we have the dates finalized, we'll make sure that we get that information over. Um, 
the service worker contacted me last week in regards to the flooding that was happening on 113 um, and asked that I parlay the information as liaison. Um, but it, it appears that there's uh, some cleaning that's not happening regularly in that ditch. So that was brought to the attention of the SABPA, and then the SABPA is adding that to the operator's list of function. Um, my recommendation talking to the service worker was that it just get done weekly. You know, you take five minutes and take a peek, and if it doesn't get clean, great. And if it does, then you're spending 15 minutes cleaning it. So they did um, add that onto his, his work. So we should, as long as that's getting done, we shouldn't have any issue with any sort of flooding on that. And then um, board member Politeri is building out a list for valve exercising and hydrant flushing um, that the operator will then execute and that the SABPA will manage uh, that getting done. Uh, and they're looking to have that start in April, May at the absolute latest, and then it, it will take place over the course of a year and then repeat. That's all I have. But, uh, one time, I thought we were flushing hydrants two times a year. I, I, I will be referred to the former water bottle clerk if that was we were. we were. And it's debatable whether it's once it's required once a year or twice a year. Dennis heard once a year, I heard twice a year. So. Mm -hmm. and the thing I, I think that has also been very debatable is that other municipalities have their fire department flush the hydrants. And the previous BPA was adamantly against them doing that. Um, my thing is, I don't know if that could be as a practice or whatever have you, but no, it's, because the fire department is going to be the one using the hydrants, and if the water operator is not available, you know, you're not going to use the hydrant. Um, I don't know if it was listed as a motion, but it had been decided by previous council that it was the fire department to do the flushing. That has been in the last five years it was put in. Um, I don't know about the qualifications of Certainly, the fire department can think about how to build that hydrant. Um, but I don't know when Dennis opens them if he uses a flow meter um, because he should be calculating the water used. So that goes to Alex so she knows how much water was used. And past experience that I've never seen was that they tend to hammer the hydrants and that's why they wanted the water department to do it not to say that we shouldn't have more than one person know how to do it and i think as a recommendation to the water board that they should look into the actual maintenance of the hydrant like greasing top of it there's a self-greasing mechanism and that grease dries out and then they don't turn as good. And so I think if they make this fine. Um, so I don't know based on the information that I have here today, I don't know if this maintenance plan is part of this plan, but I do recall at meetings previous that the greasing and all that other stuff was brought up and the hammering was also brought up and that's why the, the desire was for the um, current operator. So I'll follow up with the SABPA just again that this may be they may have this, you know, maintenance as part of right. this system here and that just wasn't communicated to me, but we'll make sure that that's incorporated uh, as a recommendation of council that get that incorporated into the plan. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Anything else as far as DPA? We will now move on to committees. Buildings and grounds. Yeah, I have nothing to go I have something. Sure. Um, I just spoke with Mr. Kelly and they got the report back from the EPA about the asbestos removal and everything's been approved. 
and he will be moving in heavy equipment sometime this week. We're on the eve of destruction. Um, so how long does that will that take? You know, I asked him because I have to take pictures and things of the, the progress. And he kind of indicated a month or more from beginning to end of the project. And I'm sorry, when you said he's bringing in equipment this is week? Yeah, this week. So that may be something that we just want to send out some level of notification to the like residents. We can do that obviously on social media or something like that. But I think that might be worth helping them keeping the phone from ringing. Yeah, <laughs> or minimizing so. in the near future so that we don't have to say it's next this week right. and then something happens. He doesn't make it, but just in the near future, the treatment plant has been scheduled for demolition. Add on there, I mean, you know, grant money that's still paying for it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, just so you know, so yeah, that's absolutely. the least of money why you just spend the money somewhere else. So, yeah, absolutely. just a little FYI, here in Rail, the better community. So, much for building the ground, now we're going to watch the street sidewalk and service. I got a question about the chippings that are on East Main Street where they took the two trees out. I mean, when's, when are we going to remove that? Since that's uh, the village took the trees down, that's a kind of the responsibility. When are they going to be removed? Are you asking? Well, I mean, that did. That was my question, yeah. I guess that's a question, Bruce. I mean, maybe nobody's aware of it, but there's chippings there. It's becoming, you know, springs just around the corner. And, you know, residents are going to want to start mowing the lawn. So that has to be evened out and the chips have to be removed. Or then, uh, if the residents very close, including the homeowners that are right there, if they want to use those for mulch, then I guess they can use that for mulch also. But somebody's got to tell the residents that. Yeah. I'll do a work order for them to find out because maybe there was discussion with the residents already. Okay. Can you continue the discussion with the street sidewalk service? Okay, so as Lori refreshes my memory, this is from the budget. When we approved the budget, we approved the two signs for uh, North and South Lake Street down by Russia. And so I will make a motion to spend the NOPEC funds for, the, uh, for two flashing street signs like we have on. Second. Discussion? Any more discussion? No call, please. Jeffers? Aye. Jones? Aye. Mashari? Aye. Saiski? Aye. Sis? Aye. Troiki? Aye. Motion passed. So we're going to do no pay funds for those signs. So who is getting the quote on the signs? Will that be David? Yeah. Okay. 
So then it's a reimbursement, correct? Right. Okay. Okay. Um, I, I just realized I was, we were supposed to set up a date. So, um, what I know is three of us last night, yeah. if anybody else wants to join us, but what days of the week work better? How light into the season do we want to go? Like, I don't want to be schlepping sh through blood and stuff. Can we do it like June? Oh, go that way. I thought we had talked about doing it like spring, spring so then the ask of the residents would be to spring, do your up. spring cleanup and stuff. Okay. So, yeah. like, March 31st is a Friday, but I don't, I mean, like, do we want to put tentative on the calendar for March 31st? Weather, yeah, weather me. dependent. Weather for me, you know. <laughs> so if we get the old uh, Cleveland snow so there, or we could get the tsunami snow. comes through, and we're trudging out in our galoshes. So, um, what time? I'm, I'm, I'm flexible. On here, so I would say anytime after five thirty is fine. That's fine. We'll do five thirty. Twenty bucks. And we. I think here's my um, I have just a request on that one. If we can get together the, like for all of us, the visibility of like what the report was, so to speak, from last time. So I think that will help guide where we're going because I know that we only went to portions because when we went last time they were doing a lot of stuff down there and so I think that would at least give us a game plan in terms of okay okay thank you March 31st Anything else as far as street sidewalk service? We'll now move on to audit finance. Once again, the next meeting is March 14th at 7 p.m. Town Hall. Next yeah, so we uh, we met for our monthly ordinance meeting and uh, went over some things. We actually had a visitor as well. Uh, so it's very nice to see people come to these meetings because obviously we like to hear their concern because with, you know, being a new ordinance board, we want to, our committee, I'm sorry, uh, we want to update things. I mean, there's things that are obviously out of date since the 70s and maybe in the 60s. Uh, so with that said, we are doing our best work. We diligently as well as we can to try to get these things updated and uh, just bear with us. Everything we're doing is for the, the betterment of the village. So, I mean, this is the best way to look at it. So, uh, other than that, thank you to that woman that did show up. Um, and uh, unless you, all the way. I'm going to report on the right on red. Yeah, clear. Um, so, when the committee met, we looked at the language and said, you know, we're going to recommend that it's all or nothing. The same sign would change to be every day for any hour um, or to have it removed. And it was based on the recommendation from the chief. And I spoke with him and he said, yes, he agrees. It should stay. The sign should stay. However, he did a follow-up call with ODOT and 
they told them that we cannot remove the sign. It has to stay there unless we want to pay to have a study done. And then once the study is done, they'll give us the determination and we can change it then. But there would be a cost to the study and I don't know the, the uh, cost of the study, but that's what ODOT says. It can't come down unless they do a study. I, I have a question. So is it that the, the language cannot be changed or that the sign itself can't come down? Both. Oh, so we can't even change the language. Correct. Oh. And are they fun? Oh. Oh, let's go ahead. I'm sorry. I recommend we do not change the signs and that we, because the last time we got a traffic study, it was a problem for us. <laughs> and so I would just recommend status quo. I mean, it's it actually helps the pedestrians and stuff that are walking around at the gas station going to East Chicago, going to the karate. So during the day, there's a lot more traffic than there is in the evening. So I think it's best to believe it has no turnout red. Mm -hmm. Mr. Troy, do you want to take a recommendation? If you would like to, I would like to take that if you want to make a motion on that. Okay, I so move that we do not change the uh, right turn on red signs. We leave them as is. Second. Discussion. Mm -hmm. More discussion. I'm all for it, obviously, just transparency if we're going to keep it the same, whatever. Uh, but it just blows my mind that you can only do this and then the weekend comes around when it's probably the busiest and it doesn't say anything about the weekend. So that's just blowing my mind. So for the record, Scott Jones, mind blown from that. Did you get the allegory? Yeah. Um, well, it's also mind blown because yeah. it's just amazing to me. And I don't disagree with you, Mr. Troike, on the fact of what the results were of the other traffic study. Um, but I, I would, I would say that if so, did o, or my question is, did ODA say who was funding this study? We would have to. We would right. have to. I mean. I don't think that we have to do it now, but we could certainly research what the cost of a study would be. I don't know about the other traffic study or, or what happened in that. I think it'd be nice if the rest of the council members were enlightened at some time about it. Um, but, you know, I think that we could budget it for something for next year. I know what the cost is. Um, just to give a preface before Mr. Church gives an explanation of the previous council before some of the new members came on, um, the state approached us about doing a traffic center for West Main Street. And at that point in time, there was no fee involved, but they did do one. So, Mr. Church, if you want to explain on that, please. Yeah, they did do a study. They felt that they should we should up our speed limits to 40 miles an hour at 113. Oh, excuse me, 45. Sorry, 45. And they felt that. They, based on their recommendation, people were coming into the village at 45 miles an hour, and they did not want to be, how do they, they didn't want to make the common citizen a criminal. And because of that reason, we didn't meet their criteria or something. Um, and they said that if we keep it at 35, we have to pay for the sons. So thankfully they haven't enforce that but that's what the study was mm -hmm. so who knows what will happen if they come in here and they might say oh you got to change the lights to leds and that's going to be six hundred thousand dollars or whatever so yeah, i think it's just best it's i i think it's a good safety thing for no turn but that's my opinion yeah just that's the question was there a people complaining about the sign or was it just something that we People yes. may complain why I had to come down to the school. I mean, we got tickets. Oh, well, if the signs don't work, you still have to, just like the school zone. So just just, just a little addendum to Mr. Trudy's explanation on that. Also, they just did a traffic study in Rochester. And I don't know how many people have been through Rochester or whatever have where the speed limit again drops to 35. They wanted to change to 50. 
If you manage to come through Rochester, hit me. If you've been through there, there's tracks. And hit those at 50. Um, you know, that's, uh, another thing for ordinance uh, at this point in time. Uh, if we we still have the motion, man. Oh, yeah, we have the motion and second if we get a roll call. No further discussion? Complaints? Any people going to write down there? No one, roll call. Jeffers? Aye. Jones? Aye. Mashari? Aye. Saisky? Aye. Sis? Aye. Troiki? Aye. Motion passed. Um, the only one is set out in bulletin. That, you know, the state budget, the biennial budget is coming up, and they would like all the municipalities to draft a resolution, and I will hand this over to the law director to propose a resolution, strongly urging the Ohio governor and the members of the Ohio General Assembly to restore the local government fund to pre-session levels. Uh, it is in the budget. Right now, we get 1.66% of the monies that are sent down to Columbus. The governor has proposed a new budget to raise that to 1.70. So, uh, you know, I, I guess it would, would be, you know, I mean, we're, we're looking at it was, I, I was looking at the fiscal office commander, it was 3.16 pre, pre COVID. Oh, I don't know. I think that would have was. So that's what they're looking to bring it to. You know, um, one point oh, no, seven. Not, not pre COVID. You're talking probably way right before the recession. Was okay, okay, yeah. Um, mm -hmm. when so, presidential candidate cases because you're not running the, the, the town, uh, the state. Uh, yeah. So that, that's when he reduced it and everything else like that. So you know, if, if everybody's in favor, then we'll have a resolution drawn up. That we can have that we are in favor of having the local government funds restored to the previous pre recession levels. No motion. A second. Any other discussion? <coughs> Discussion with the roll call, please. Jeffers? Hi. Jones? Hi. Mashari? Hi. Saisky? Hi. Sis? Hi. Troiki? Hi. Motion passed. Do you want to go to safety? Receive your water from the police and the one from January from the fire department. Other than that, we don't have anything else. Yeah. Thank you. Community economic development. Okay. Thank you to everybody who turned in submissions for the um, newsletter. There were several committees that didn't, but I'm just going with what I got. So I should have a draft by week's end, and I'll send that over to the records clerk and the fiscal officer. If you ladies don't mind just taking a second set of eyes, and then we can get that posted for everybody um, early next week. Um, the welcome packet, the water clerk sent me a copy of the current document that she does send, and then I also have um, a copy of um, what another local Main Street uses for theirs. Obviously, there's a little bit more robust, but still in, in terms of having some availability of things. So by next council meeting, I'll have a draft uh, put together for that welcome packet and what that looks like uh, for everybody's review. And then Memorial Day planning. Um, as I mentioned, the last council meeting, we do have Honor Guard confirmed. Um, I spoke with resident Kathy Thomas, who um, her brother, um, passed away in combat and her mom's gold star. She asked last year to be involved in the planning. So she and I spoke and we're going to meet at 5 p.m. on Monday, March 6th at Town Hall. 
So I know that there's an SABPA meeting, but that's at seven, so that gives us plenty of time. Um, and I, when I talked to the records clerk last time, we didn't necessarily need to make it a public notice meeting, but rather we can open it up if people wanted to attend just because it's a thing, right? They're not really making a decision. Be, no, it will be listed as a public notice, yeah. just with what we put. Right. But. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So obviously, if anybody wants to come and, and join us for that, and I know so March 6th at, March 6th at 5 p.m. March 6th at 5 p.m. Yeah. And then Jeannie sent me a couple of contacts. Um, so we'll get this thing wrapping and rolling, and it'll be an extravaganza. Yeah. Yeah. So. And that's all I have. Administrator? No, thank you. So we have a bunch of ordinances here to cover at this point in time. And then there'll be objective. Object to us being our title only. Okay, ordinance number um, 1759 23. This is the second reading. Park Pavilion Rental. An ordinance repealing existing ordinance 1693-21 and replacing with ordinance 1759-23 to authorize the rental of the South Amherst Community Park Pavilion and setting the rate and declaring an emergency. Okay, ordinance number 1760-23, this is to be an emergency, an ordinance of cancellation for the Village of South Amherst Mowing contract with Go Green Landscaping and Garden Center for 2023 and declaring an emergency. I move to pass ordinance number 1760-23, suspend the rules and pass as an emergency. Second. Discussion? Any discussion? Roll call, please. Jeffers? Aye. Jones? Aye. Mashari? Aye. <coughs> Saiski? Aye. Sis? Aye. Trudke? Aye. That was the suspended rules. Yeah. And then it's up to pass order. Uh, Ordinance number 1760 23. Jeffers? Aye. Jones? Aye. Mashari? Aye. Saiski? Aye. Sis? Aye. Trucky. Aye. This is now to, to pass ordinance 1760 23 as emergency. Jeffers? Aye. Jones? Aye. Mashari? Aye. Saiski? Aye. Sis? Aye. Trucky. Aye. Motion passed. Okay, ordinance number 1761 23 to pass as an emergency, an ordinance repealing existing South Amherst codified ordinance section 311.06 and enacting new South Amherst codified ordinance section 311.06 traffic control procedures in construction areas and declaring an emergency. I'll make a motion to pass ordinance 1761-23, suspend the rules that passes in emergency. Second. Discussion? I have a little more clarification on what that means to the You want an explanation? Please. That's where we change that the chief is responsible to decide um, with respect to the traffic control flaggers and having the um, off-duty police do it. Thanks for that explanation. 
Any discussion? Let's have a roll call to suspend the rules. Jeffers? Aye. Jones? Aye. Mashari? Aye. Sisby? Aye. Sis? Aye. Trucky? Aye. Let's have a vote to pass ordinance 1761 23. Jeffers? Aye. Jones? Aye. Mashari? Aye. Sisby? Aye. Sis? Aye. Trucky? Aye. Let's have a motion. I'll do the roll call to pass ordinance 1761 23 as an emergency. Jeffers? Aye. Jones? Aye. Mashari? Aye. Sisky? Aye. Sis? Aye. Troy Geek? Aye. Motion passed. Okay, ordinance number 1762-23 to pass as an emergency, an ordinance repealing existing South Amherst codified ordinance section 351.03 and enacting new South Amherst codified ordinance section 351.03 prohibited standing or parking places and declaring an emergency. Discussion? Oh, I'm sorry. It's a no, motion. Pass ordinance number 1762-23, suspend the rules and pass as an emergency. I'll second. I'll allow the discussion. As I was approached today and someone complained about someone parking in the street, they cannot get passed and they can such a bad night. Inform you that we will be passing some legislation on that. <coughs> they were very really happy. This, this part of the ordinance change was pertaining to parking and we just um, beat up the no parking uh, language in the ordinance. Yes, yeah, so just to piggyback on that, this was all already written. This wasn't, this is not necessarily new, but we just made it crystal clear so there wasn't necessarily a gray area that it includes no parking on the sh actual street streets. Whether or not two inches of snow or not. No, no, that's not this one. That's the next one. Okay. So. And then uh, the service worker will be getting the signs. He's working with the uh, chief to determine where the, the no parking signs would be best placed, and, and he'll probably run it past the, the street committee as well. We had a discussion I had with the chief this afternoon, and he said that there was probably about nine places throughout the village that the signs should be posted. Any further discussion? We have a roll call to suspend the rules for ordinance number 1760 23. Jeffers? Aye. Jones? Aye. Mashari? Aye. Saisky? Aye. Sis? Aye. Trucky? Aye. We have a roll call to pass ordinance 1760 23. Jeffers? Aye. Jones? Aye. Shari? Aye. Saisky? Aye. Sis? Aye. Trucky? Aye. We have a roll call to pass ordinance 1760 23 as an emergency. Jeffers? Aye. Jones? Aye. Shari? Aye. Saisky? Aye. Sis? <coughs> Aye. Trucky? Aye. Motion passed. Just this Okay, ordinance number 1763-23 to pass as an emergency and ordinance repealing existing South Amherst codified ordinance section 351.06 and declaring emergency. This was the snow ban, snow parking ban. I'm going to pass ordinance number 1763-23, suspend the rules and pass as an emergency. Second. Discussion. Discussion. I have a roll call for system rules for one to seven six zero dash two. Yeah, that doesn't matter. That was just for me about the system. Don't worry about it. I said the right number. Okay, then seven six three two. 
tend to be suspend rules. Jeffers? Aye. Jones? Aye. Mashari? Aye. Saiski? Aye. Sis? Aye. Shirky? Aye. Jeffers? Aye. Jones? Aye. Mashari? Aye. Saiski? Aye. Sis? Aye. Shirky? Aye. Motion passed. I need a roll call to pass for the 2763 2 Jeffers? Aye. Jones? Aye. Mashari? Aye. Saiski? Aye. Sis? Aye. Shorty? Aye. Motion passed. All the ordinances. Under miscellaneous. No comments. There's a knowledge. No further news. Sorry, Mr. Wisconsinski. Just a question as to why we have about the radio system. For the past and hand out button here. Okay. As it was explained to me by the fire chief, is we went to the fire chief's meeting, they did have a meeting, and what they're doing is providing information uh, of the comparison between the marks and the uh, Harris systems. And of course, they would like you know, the municipalities to maybe get together and or each municipality pass a resolution that they support the Harris system versus the mark system. So that's why this grant draft is here. Please. Um, can the records report please get a copy? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Is everybody aware what the marks system is? No. no. Okay, that is the state of Ohio's multi agency communication. I forget how what the mark stands for. But that's through the state of Ohio. And it's, I mean, you could talk from the car here all the way down to Cincinnati. Uh, but it is very spotty. It is not, I mean, if you lose a repeater system in between there, you kind of lose all communication. So the hair system is better than what the marks is for what the fire department needs. And for the little the knowledge that I went to when we had the hearings at the commissioner's office is that the hair system is supposedly Wi-Fi based. Of course, Mr. Tricky, you probably be know a little bit more about that than I do. Because we are handmakers. Is that am I really off base with that or from what I understand, yes. This is. So is the fire chief asking for something from council? I don't know what the ask is other than the sheet of paper. Um, I definitely think we could consider the resolution supporting the efforts to get the Harris systems in this county. This is the marks. Then I would have an ask that the fire chief come in and talk to council. I don't know that putting a piece of paper in front of somebody is a sufficient way to communicate and ask. So that would be it. I'm not, I'm not opposed to it. I just don't know. And I don't know that it's the responsibility of Councilmember Troike to explain it to us and did he ask. So I, that's my that's my recommendation is for the fire chief to come in and do a proper ask in front of council. Just a clarification and I'm looking at this. You, everybody can take care of system. Is that the Cleveland Communications? Yes. Okay. I'm sorry. If I, did, I didn't I, see it. Well, I didn't see it anywhere on it, and I've heard that other mention other places. Yeah, that's the Which brand of radios that they're using. Okay. Cleveland Communications is who they're going to deal with as far as the email. Okay. Thank you. 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 The water treatment plant, no street parking ordinance was passed, and then the Memorial Day, plan, Memorial Day Parade planning meeting. 
If there's anything else that anybody wants me to submit, please go ahead and send me an email. But based on the meetings tonight, that's what it looks like. That we're gonna, I'm going to add to the postings. Anything else? Motion to adjourn. Second. Present time. Look at the council. Where is the council?